Alright guys, uh, thank you for getting up early, even though some of you are looking at me shaking your head, which is good. Um, no, but you guys are going to learn a lot, right? She's a friend, a colleague, great person to know. Um, I truly respect her, so give her your attention. Um, yeah, and Jim Jones, so there you go. So thank you guys for coming. I know it's early. I don't know if you guys normally have class at this time. In the back, can, I, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. So um, my name is Kim Jones. I'm the strength and conditioning coach at El Camino College. And I met Matt maybe about like, a little over a year ago. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Before I start, I just want to say I never got the opportunity to actually get insights on the field until my mid-20s, and I'm going to kind of talk about that in a second. So I don't expect to reach everybody here in regards to people that might be interested in, in joining the field, but for the few that are interested, afterwards, if you want to get some, some kind of just exposure to what strength and conditioning is, please feel free to contact me because I'm always looking for interns every semester, fall, spring, and summer. So that being said, I kind of want to start with us being a little physical. I'm going to, if, if, if we're down for it, kind of give you a little bit of, of a taste of what I do when somebody first walks in my weight room. So if anybody's interested uh, in just kind of getting assessed, not judged, but assessed, um, can I get maybe like three volunteers to come up here to the front? Or we got We got four, perfect, or five. It's all good. The more, the more, the better. Okay. So let me have you guys just kind of get the straight line right here. And this, this is an assessment that I normally do because it exposes a lot. And there's maybe like, I don't know how many people there are in here. Sometimes I get about like 60 to 50 people in one room, and sometimes it's just me. And I got to be able to assess a lot the first day and know where people are, mobility-wise, strength-wise, what have you. So this is an exercise I call squat to stand. I'm going to show you, then I'll coach you guys up. So it's five movements. First is a hamstring stretch. So off the bat, they can't touch their toes. I know that's an issue of flexibility and maybe some pelvic issues and stability. So one is a uh, hamstring stretch. Two, we squat. Hands under the balls of the feet. Want the back tight. Three, four, and then we stand up on five. Okay? So I'll, I'll coach you through it. And usually it's on me. So what I'll do is I'll say one. So one, everybody hang. So your feet are about hip to shoulder width apart. Toes are slightly turned out. Then I get a chance to assess. So everybody's able to touch their toes pretty much. Okay, that's good. So two, go ahead and squat down. I want your hands underneath the balls of your feet. That's going to help you stabilize. Use your elbows to push your knees out. Open up the hips. Now, puff the chest out so that back is nice and flat. So what I'm looking for is a few things. I'm looking for, are their heels down? Because if their heels are not down, that's a lack of ankle mobility. I'm looking at it. So arms straight. Push those knees out. Puff the chest out. I'm looking for how flat the backs are. Okay, now we're going to keep our eyes straight ahead. Keep the left hand under the balls of your feet. Right? Lift the right arm up. Excuse me. Right, right arm is up. Now I'm looking for shoulder mobility. All right, lats, Terry's major, maybe too tight. Maybe we're here, not all the way here. Uh, right arm up, four. Or left arm up, four. There you go. Eyes straight ahead. Stand up five through the heels. Good. That's one. And then I'll have them count out. And we'll just do one more rep just for the sake of just for everybody watching. Let me have you face the side so they get a side view. Would you mind facing the back this way? That will get. Front side and back feet. So here we go. One hamstring stretch. Right. So toes are slightly turned out. Hip to shoulder width apart. Squat down two. Hands underneath the balls of the feet. Arms are locked. So push those knees out with your elbows. Puff the chest out. So we're looking for ankles. Are their heels down? Are the knees pushed out? In line with the toes. Is the back flat or is it not flat? Right arm up three. What's our range of motion? Are we in front or can we get all the way back? Eyes are straight ahead. And then four. And as we stand up, five. Do the knees cave in, or are they able to stay out in line with the toes? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. So that's called squat to stand. So off the bat, I'm knowing, okay, somebody's got shoulder issues, somebody's got ankle issues, somebody's got hip issues. Some people can't even squat down and get the, This was actually a great group. Some people have to actually use a foam roller because they can't even get the full range of motion. So that's kind of like, I just want to jump in with something physical to kind of give you guys a, a clue for what I'm looking for in regards to what I'm working with. Uh, another exercise, we can all just stay in our seats. Um, this is something that I just kind of started to implement in my classrooms, which is not necessarily breathing, but focusing on how to breathe properly. I used to always emphasize breathing, but now I'm realizing how important breathing, diaphragmic breathing is for stability. So I want everybody to put your arms at your sides, relax for a second. 
I want you to take the deepest breath you can in, as deep as possible, in through your nose, and let it up your mouth. Ready? And go. And down. Okay. So I, I think about 75% of the room did this, and then relaxed. Did anybody feel that or no? Okay, so that's chest breathing. A lot of us are kind of breathing up. A lot of us are maybe because of the way we're sitting and writing, or maybe the way we carry stress. We tend to carry a lot of stress in our traps. A lot of people breathe here. As opposed to, so we lift the rib cage up, which sometimes puts pressure on the back, as opposed to expanding the ribs. So taking a deep breath in, keeping the chest down, trying to get to the bottom of the ribs, um, the lower lobes of the, of the lungs to get as much air in as possible, and then let the air out. So we'll try that one more time. This time, try not to lift up. Instead, try to feel your rib cage expand into your nose. Let it out through your mouth. Ready, and go. In through the nose, all the way down, and then let it out through your mouth. There you go. That was a lot better. Okay, so another exercise that I normally do, which is simple because you have to breathe to stay alive, but at the same time, the most common cue I have to give my athletes is to breathe. Whether they're doing an agility ladder, whether they're do sometimes even lifting, they don't breathe. So, now I'll give you a little bit of an intro of my world. If you want to get a little bit of a view of our facilities and just kind of our different sports teams on campus. It's <coughs> about a two and a half minute video. Just doing some acceleration drills with baseball before we actually do some sprints. This is women's basketball. This is part of our warm up, PVC pipe warm up, just to kind of get some blood flowing. So, this is a movement called a dumbbell snatch. Doing some plyos. So, working on acceleration, working on deceleration. This is women's volleyball. So we're super setting the glute exercise with the deadlift. We just got these Vertimax over the summer, so I'm trying to implement those as much as possible. She's a beast. She's done like over 300 pounds with that exercise before. This is men's volleyball, doing some eccentric hamstring exercises. Baseball again. We don't really have a ton of sleds, so we'll use bands for our resistant type of sprints. This is when we maxed out. I think that was when we maxed out. This guy's one of our catchers, uh, excuse me, one of our pitchers. First time he's ever hit five plates on deadlift. This is one of our catchers. I think that was 320. That wasn't his best rep. His best rep was 255. I think that might have been his best. He beat his from last year. Just doing some baseball specific stuff with the Vertimax. Usually a super heavy weighted exercise followed by a plyo and then this type of sport specific movement. Shoulder circuit, all my overhead sports in with the shoulder circuit. Women's softball, testing. I think this might have been her, her heaviest rep. She's little. <laughs> Softball is a good group this year, really <clears throat> strong girls. I think she hit 220 for one, this might have been the rep, 220. She tried to hit 225, it was easy. She tried to hit 225, she didn't get it, but I'm sure in a few weeks she will. Send softball team doing some agility on the field. Day in the life of Coach Jones, pretty much. So now, <clears throat> so in regards to my my background, strength and conditioning coach. Um, also, I don't know. Does anybody know anybody that's a bodybuilder, competitor, figure, bikini, body? Okay, so, so I'm a figure competitor as well. It's cool to kind of get a little bit of a balance of doing the bodybuilding stuff on my own and then doing the, the more kind of performance training with my athletes. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm trying to do is decrease the chance of injury uh, and then enhance performance. And this is kind of like just me listing stuff. I kind of want to just talk about my experience because like I said in the beginning, 
I didn't really get exposed to this until probably like my late 20s. So if I can rewind back to college, I majored in psychology, so my degree, undergrad degree is in psychology. Worked in the field for maybe three months, not far from El Camino. I worked in a transitional center where people came from a mental hospital, mental health hospital, and got discharged. And it was a transitional living center. So basically, we taught them independent living skills so they could eventually live out on their own. So in regards to the first time in my life, I was actually able to see something that I studied, bipolar, schizophrenia, depression. That was, it was eye-opening. And it was incredible to see because I had just learned it and then, you know, I'm, I'm just immersed in this field. At the same time, it was a little too heavy for me. I, it, was, it was kind of it was sad to kind of see some, some of these people's kind of reality. But with that being said, I walked away from that realizing this is not what I want to do. And it's like, wow, I just spent four years thinking this is what I, what I was going to do. And now I have my degree, I'm already in my field, and I don't want to do it. So I'm already feeling like I'm kind of behind in that regard. <clears throat> So that's what I did for three months. Then I decided, you know, I want to do some personal training. When I was in college, I did not play basketball. I grew up playing basketball, like play travel ball. I was on a competitive dance team. So I'd always been active. And when I went to college, it was the first time that I didn't have some kind of regimented type of, type of activity for me to do. So I just started running. We didn't have a gym on campus. I went to Xavier University, small NAIA school, no gym or anything. So I was just running to stay in shape. And that's kind of where I developed my love for fitness. So I remember seeing a commercial senior year in college of a, it was like a trade school program. Like, I don't know if it was online because the internet was kind of somewhat new back then in like 2001. But I saw something about personal training and it kind of